One of the first things that I began doing when I started consulting and coaching about 16 years ago now was to reverse engineer some of the successes that I've had in business and identify what was going on, what was happening during that time that resulted in the things that were very successful for me. Um, in business, I've had ups and downs. I've had great times. I've had challenging times. Overall, it's been a wonderful experience because entrepreneurship is incredibly rewarding. You have this sense of freedom. You have uh, unlimited potential. You can decide what you want to sell, who you want to sell it to, how you want to sell it. So it is a tremendously rewarding career. At the same time, if you run a business, whether it's as a soloist or whether you have a staff, you know that it is challenging. So I wanted to figure out what I could share with other entrepreneurs that would be helpful in their quest. Of course, understanding the coaching and consulting business was another, was another trip. But one of the first things I did was I started to go out and talk about your business with, with the title, Your Business Can Flourish. And I believe that, I believe that in business, uh, your business can flourish. And in fact, I'm working on improving that program that I released some years ago uh, with some new updated information, some of which I'm gonna share with you right now. So what is the challenge when you're running a company, whether it's um, you providing services individually, whether you're a uh, hairstylist, a uh, um, uh, personal uh, exercise coach, or uh, whether you are, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're doing, you're a vocal coach, whether you are a graphic designer, um, whether you run a business that uh, is a caterer, or whatever it is you do, what's the challenge in making that business really flourish? What does it really amount to? Well, I think. Uh, the, the first thing is understanding that the business is a reflection of its owner. And the first thing you have to fix when you, you know, I don't even like this idea of fixing your business because the idea of thinking of it as being defective in some way is not something I like to think of. I like to think of a business as a living, breathing entity that you can make um, better. You can, you can make it fulfill its potential. There's nothing wrong with a business. There's nothing defective about a business. Now, certainly a business should always produce the revenue that you want and the, and the profit that you want and work with the clients you want. But the first thing to understand is your, your business is not broken. You just have to make some adjustments in your business to make it reflect what you want it to reflect. Now, having said that, if there's anything that, that has to be adjusted, it's the owner. Now, this is hard to hear. This is uh, painful to admit, but the business is a reflection of you, the owner. So if there's something about the business that isn't working, if you're not attracting the right clients, if you don't have enough revenue, if you're not making profit on deals, if you are unable to keep staff on board that uh, reflect your values and that do a good job. It's you. It's you. Now, this is a very difficult thing to accept because you really want to look at everyone else and you want to say, you know, if, if this client would pay their bill on time, I'd be able to, to do X, Y, Z. If these people would respond, I'd be able to do X, Y, Z. But really, it's you. And the issue is that the business is showing you what has to be done, what has to be improved, but you are not dealing with it because you think that it is the market or it's the client or it's the industry or it's something else. Now, this was something that I discovered when I was running my sports company, and it was particularly challenging then because we were working on a new product. And that is very dangerous because when you're working on a new product, 
there's no evidence that it works. There's no evidence that this is going to have market acceptance and that you can make money doing it. So one thing you can fall victim to is being patient and hoping that it will catch on and not making adjustments fast enough. Now I have to say, even though we were patient and we had to, to, to see how we could get this thing working, uh, this product we called Coach TV back then, that was designed to help professional sports teams in their analysis of players and, and the game. We had to achieve the other financial milestones that were out there, so we had to figure out how to adjust on a daily day-to-day -day business so we could get revenue so that we could keep going, how to get investors so we could keep going, how to do things so we could keep going. And that brings me to the second piece of what will make your business flourish. The first one is you've got to adjust the owner. Uh, if there's anything that needs to be fixed, it's you've got to fix the owner, the owner's thinking, the owner's perception, the owner's actions, and have to understand that the business is you. Whatever is lacking in the business, if you want to look at it that way, it is you. Well, the second issue is locked in thinking. Now, your locked in thinking might be on several different levels. The first thing is it might be limited limited thinking. So you only think you can have clients at a certain price point or in a certain area or for a certain service or um, under certain conditions. So you have limited your business because you are not looking beyond the scope of what you've done before. The other locked in thinking is conditional. So I can have this, but only if these conditions exist, if I have this amount of capital, if you know, it's the holiday season, if I have this team, if I have this and so forth. And then the third piece of locked in thinking is what is fear-based. Uh, and that is you, you are uh, reacting constantly to your fears and therefore you are not really doing what could be done in the business. So locked in thinking is really the biggest issue. And after consulting with now thousands of businesses over the last 16 years or so, I have been astounded to see, I mean, I always knew this, but I've been astounded to see the many different ways someone can bring a business to market and all the things that they can do. And the creativity is just enormous out there. There are people who have the same conditions you have that are making money. There are people who, and they're, they're, they're tweaking it. They think they have limit. You think that it's a limitation. They think it's an asset. Um, and so, you know, you've got to work on that locked in thinking and say to yourself, um, what assumptions have I made about my business that I have uh, carried on day to day that might be restricting what's possible. Now the third issue here is something that many businesses suffer from and it's related to locked in thinking. And that's what's real is keeping you from what's possible. What's real is keeping you from what's possible. So if you have, um, issues that you're dealing with, if you have expenses that you're dealing with, if you have deadlines that you have to meet, you're so consumed with those that <clears throat> you're not beginning to think beyond those. And I can tell you that I this has happened to me so many times in business where I, you know, I'm, I'm chugging along, I'm doing my thing, and then I've got something that I've got to address. And because I've got to address that, I'm not thinking big enough. I'm not doing those other things that have to happen in order to make the business more successful because I am locked in and what's real is keeping me from the potential of the business. Now, um, 
The next thing I would say that you've got to understand in this process is that investment is required. And I see so many businesses and so many individuals in their career, and they don't want to make an investment. <clears throat> they don't want to invest um, time in study. They don't want to invest money in good guidance and advice. Um, I mean, even in, in the in the high-end sector, I see people trying to build a business in luxury and they want to sell something that is high price, but they won't commit small amounts of money to figuring out how to do that properly and how to get the best thinking on how to do that. And I have invested so much in my businesses and in my career over time that um, it would surprise you. And that investment in money, in information, in time, in study, in work, in relationships is crucial to advancing to a new level. So if you want to have a business that flourish, you have to understand that investment is required. You can't do it without investing. Now, the next piece of this is once you realize that investment is required, you've looked at this locked in thinking, you've taken personal responsibility, and you realize that you can flourish, what you've got to do is you've got to show up in the world differently. You've got to, and I would say that the, the, the way I would summarize this is you have to decide on a new direction, on a new message, on a new audience, on a new client base, whatever that is, and you have to uh, start moving in that direction immediately. You have to do it right away. And when you make that change, you know, you're going to make that change and there are going to be some pieces that are not going to be quite there. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the perfection. Don't worry about all the things that you've got to do. Don't worry about that, but you've got to show up differently. And what that means is you have to start talking about what you do differently, talking to different people about it. You have to change your pricing. You have to change your offering. You have to change your market, you have whatever you have to do, and you realize you have to do it to be a better business, you've got to do it. You've got to show up immediately. And once you make that shift, well, here's what happens. Your whole mindset about what you're doing shifts. The whole perception shifts. Um, I can remember this um, when, uh, you know, as a kid, I used to play the piano. And I had a mindset of myself as learning to play the piano and as a student and trying to figure this out. And then I got a, a, a music teacher, <coughs> excuse me, and, and I recently got in, in touch with him. His name is Ronnie Foster, very well-known uh, jazz musician. And he came to the music school and he said, oh, no, no, let me show you how to, let me show you how to play what's on the radio. Let me show you how to do this. Let me show you how to, how to assume the position of being uh, someone who knows how to do this. And I was just a kid, but that mindset, that shift made me approach everything I was doing differently in terms of playing the piano. And I can remember uh, in my church I used to play, and one Sunday um, there was a person that I used to take lessons from in the church at one point. And this particular Sunday, a uh, friend of mine in the church, Henry, and I opened up the service. I was playing the piano and he was playing the organ. And I could see that the old music teacher was astounded when she saw me playing. She couldn't believe it. And she came running up to me after that and she said, oh my goodness, this was incredible. And I have to tell you what happened is my mindset. Ronnie Foster changed my, my mindset about what I could do. 
and and told me that oh no 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 you can do this here's how you do it and he and he gave me some technique but it was really shifting my mind about what i was doing and how i was doing it and so you have to show up differently i showed up differently and that made a tremendous difference for me now um, the next thing you have to do is re is realize that uh, part of the process in showing up differently are new names and new faces that have to show up. And I want you to go through an exercise. I want you to look at your email. I want you to look in your phone. And I want you to look at the people that you're talking to. Who are the people? Who are the clients you're talking to? Who are the people that you're talking to on the phone? And what you're going to realize is that you are in a small circle. And when you start to go down your contacts, you're going to realize that, okay, this is a pretty good client, and this is a pretty good client, and that's a pretty good client. But are they at the level that I need in order to raise this business where I need it to be? Is this the level proposal I should be dealing with? Is this the level conversation I need? Is this the level interaction I need? And what you're going to realize is that, <coughs> excuse me, that locked-in thinking is showing up in your activities day to day. And, and this is very common for a business, particularly if you work alone. So you have a client and that client, you know, satisfies financial problems for you. That client, um, you know, comes in and says, okay, I'll, I'll you know, I'll buy uh, X hundred dollars, X thousand dollars, whatever the number is. And, and you feel good because you have that client, they satisfied a problem that you had, and you feel good about being in business, but that's not enough. That's not enough to grow a business that's really successful. So you need some new names and faces, and those new names and faces include um, staff, partners, affiliates, uh, vendors, relationships, uh, people that you're learning from, authors, people you're reading from, seminars you're going to. You have to get a new circle of people who will lift what you're doing to new levels. And you can't do that if you're talking to the same 10 people or the same seven people, or the same five people. As great as those clients might be and as wonderful as those relationships might be, you've got to break into a new circle in order to lift that business. Now, the last thing that you have to do is you have to um, and this is going to sound ironic to you, but the last thing you have to do is get the back office in, in shape. And those are all those mechanics that you know you have to get done. You have to get the, um, the paperwork done. You have to get the databases done. You have to get the, the um, you know, all of those things. The, and, and, and this is no disrespect to accounting and all those other things that you have to do. But the number one reason why your business is not flourishing is because you are not marketing the business with the right mindset and that marketing activity is then not producing sales prospects and sales relationships that you can turn into the revenue that you need and the profit that you need to support the growth of the business and that's where you're stuck you're stuck in a cycle that is defeating so once you look at these things and once you address these things, once you address the owner's mindset, address your locked in thinking, you then start to um, look at your potential rather than just what's real and what's urgent. Once you start to make an investment in your business, once you show up in the world differently, once you get some new names and faces involved, and then once you get your back office in, in, in order, you're going to see that that is going to make the difference in your business. That's when your business is going to start to flourish. Now, this is a ongoing process. This is not a one-time thing. This is something, this process I have done, these seven steps I have done over and over and over again. And I've figured out that um, when I'm having some challenges, these are these are the primary things that are that are that are happening, and this is not theory. This is real. I've had real setbacks. I've had real challenges. 
I've had to make the calls to friends and family and say, you know what, I've got this problem, can you help me out? I've had to do that, I've had the real setbacks. So I know uh, the challenges associated with growing a business. But I can tell you that if you address these things and you take these things seriously, your business will flourish. Your business will flourish. Get started working on these things Make these adjustments in your business and you will see a difference, a difference that you'll be proud of and you'll start to see a business that uh, you might not have recognized in the old days because it, it looks differently, it feels differently, and produces some different opportunities for you. If you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Share it with someone that you think will benefit from hearing. Uh, these ideas and I will see you next time and oh make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you subscribe see you next time